Well, we had a very eventful ROH final battle as well. The final pay-per-view before they shut down and do whatever restructuring they're going to do leading into the WrestleMania weekend. Did you see any of this show? No, none of it. I missed the opener of all matches, which was uh, Dragon Lee and Ray Horace. Oh, geez. That's, that, that was like the match I was most looking forward to. Well, I saw the rest of the show. We had the uh, ROH television title, Rhett Titus beat Dalton Castle, Silas Young, and Joe Hendry to uh, win the title. So Rhett Titus leaves as the uh, Ring of Honor television champion. And good match. Lots of big spots. Um, four-way crowd. Uh, we, had a, we had a crowd here for the show. It was, it was, it was, uh, they, they did like 1,600 people. I mean, it was. Yeah, it felt like a big crowd. Yeah, I mean, they had a nice crowd. They had a nice crowd. Um, you know, again, final battle and everything. It wasn't close to full because I think the building holds five, but, but, you know, Ring of Honor has had trouble drawing in the last, you know, since the pandemic. And even before the pandemic, they had a real bad year going in. So, yeah. We had a ref bump, and then, uh, we had Hendry hitting Castle with the title belt. But then Dak Draper, who was doing commentary, ran down to the ring. He took out Hendry. And uh, finally, Titus avoided a springboard splash and hit his drop kick and won the championship. So uh, this was a good match. Throughout the show, uh, Tony Khan had noted that he was going to help out Ring of Honor. He obviously gave him Jay Lethal for the main event after Bandito had to pull out due to a positive COVID test. But throughout the show, I mean, we had all sorts of of Ring of Honor uh, former alumni. We had CM Punk on the show talking about Ring of Honor. We had uh, Brian Danielson. We had Adam Cole, uh, Hangman Page. So he gave all of his biggest stars. I mean, these, this was all, I think, pre-taped at uh, uh, Dynamite. Um but I mean, they all they all gave comments about what Ring of Honor had meant to them in their careers. We had. I wonder if that, wonder if that means that um, Khan is. Uh, I mean, there's some business. Well, there's clearly business because after the uh, Briscoes match, which we're going to get into, uh, they challenged anybody, uh, and FTR accepted, and they did the pull apart brawl and all of the, the officials coming down to break it up. So. Looks like uh, we're going to get Briscoes versus FTR, and that at that point here that would almost surely be in AEW. Yes. So, um, I mean, it also you know maybe maybe Con. I don't know. I don't. I mean, it's it's perhaps that Con would. I don't know if he would help the Ring of Honor when they come back, but maybe it's just that. Um, I mean, you know, the Briscoes are probably not you know like going to WWE anyway. So it may be that he's going to pick up a lot of these guys, which I expected he'd pick up some of these guys. And the Briscoes, I don't know. I mean, it's like they don't need another tag team, but the Briscoes are great, so it's a it's a good addition. And yeah, Briscoes FTR. It's like that's one of the you know the FTRs wanted to face the Briscoes. I mean, they've been wanting that for for years. Um, but yeah, maybe it's one of those things where. You know, they do have that tape library. I mean, I know originally it, so they said it wasn't for sale, but um, there's, like, again, there's, you know, maybe Tony just was decided to be nice and, you know, spice up their show or and think that it would be good for his company because people will there's talk no about There's no way company. you could watch this show and not think there's an FTR Briscoes match coming. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sure I'm sure there is, and I'm sure it's going to be in, in, um, in AEW, too. Um but there's probably more. Sure. Um, and, uh, you know, as far as, like, who else from, uh, you know, who else from the promotion will end up in AEW, um, you know, I don't know. But it'd be, but you, you know, there's there's plenty of quality people. I mean, freaking Dragon Lee is, like, you know, he's one of the top guys. And, um, you know, uh, Brody King, um, Bandito. I mean, there's some there's some real talent. There's a lot of real talent in this company. We had Josh Woods uh, beating Brian Johnson to retain the ROH Pure title. And they went 13 minutes, and it's a pretty good match. Uh, basically, Brian Johnson ran out of rope breaks very early, and then near the end, he tried to use the belt, and then he used a uh, brass knucks for a uh, close near fall. And then finally, they were up on the top rope, and Woods put him in a sleeper, and Johnson passed out, so Josh Woods retains 
the title. We also had Jimmy Jacobs doing a promo talking about the uh, talking about the history of Ring of Honor. We had Shane Taylor beating Kenny King in a fight without honor. If you love yourself a fight without honor, this was a match for you. They had all sorts of gimmicks. They had ladders. They had ladder bridges. Uh, they did the uh, package pile driver through a ladder bridge outside, which looked like it was it was just brutal. And uh, chair spots and everything like that. Uh, package pile driver, uh, as I noted through the uh, through the ladder, threw him in the ring. Kenny King kicked out, and uh, finally uh, Taylor hit his uh, package pile driver onto a chair for the pin. And so uh, this was a good match, good match, lots of gimmicks. CM Punk video is noted, and then we had Roxy beating Willow, which was a little bit sloppy early, but it turned into a good match. And uh, Willow, his, um, it was basically the David versus Goliath match. Uh, Roxy sold and sold and then made the big comeback and uh, finally hit the code red, the code rock, and got the pin to retain the title. And then Deanna Parazzo came out with the uh, AAA Reina Duranis title. And she said that she was going to beat Mickey James for the knockouts title at the next pay-per-view. And afterwards, she was going to challenge Roxy to a winner-takes-all match. And they shook hands. So it looks like uh, someone is leaving with all of the belts. I don't yeah, know what that means for that the would, future of the uh, Ring of Honor women's title. That would mean that perhaps Roxy is going to be with Impact. Yep. Adam Cole promo. And then we had uh, Violence Unlimited. Brody King, Homicide, Tony Deppin, and Rocky Romero versus EC3 and the Foundation. 13 minutes. A lot of cool spots in this match because basically this was the tribute to the old um, Ring of Honor. Everybody was doing everybody's spots from the past, including, I think it was um, Deppin. Somebody did all of the old Generico spots, uh, including the top rope Brain Buster. Uh, It was Isom, actually, that did it. Isom hit the uh, the top rope brain buster, the Luva kick, and then Homicide hit him with the cop kill. He kicked out of that, and finally Brody King tagged in and hit the giant Gonzo bomb on Isom, and he got the win. So afterwards, EC3 is doing this promo, and he's talking about how you know we've been we've been fired. These uh, executives have all the money. We don't have a job. You got to start looking out for yourselves. And he's trying to uh, to convince some people to join him. And who should come out but uh, Wesley Blake, some other dude who I did not recognize, and of all people, the Titan Adam Scher, the yeah. former Braun Strowman. And so he came out, and they uh, they ran off uh, Isom Johnson and Draper. And so it's uh, EC3, the former Braun Strowman, uh, the former Wesley Blake, and uh, whoever the other guy is. I didn't recognize him, but so uh, I, they're the new crew. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's just interesting because... I mean, it suggests to me that they're all going to impact, because I think EC3 is, is probably impact-bound, and Adam Scher probably would be going with him there. Because, you know, that's my presumption. I don't know. Um, I don't. I don't know either. I mean, they could. They could go to AEW. Um, it's not like you know. I mean, they could. The um, the thing that I thought you know, as far as um, with with the the Titan Adam Shear is that unless you know, you know, if if he's going to Impact and it's an angle to get to Impact or AEW for that matter, then this all makes sense. But um, and if he came in because EC3 asked him for a favor, um, then that's fine too. But you know, if he came in at his at anywhere near his asking price, it's just kind of weird. Someone like him, like it's one thing you do a surprise because you're building for like the next month's card, but to pay someone a lot of money to do a surprise on a lame duck last show of the promotion when you don't advertise them. When someone like that might sell some tickets, that's like, you know, that's getting way too deep into the stupidity. But um, 
you know i mean we'll have to see what you know if, if he like he said if he came for for a low price for future business for another company that he is going to that makes sense if he came because they paid him a shitload of money to have a big surprise on their last pay-per-view um and they didn't advertise him that's like i mean that's boggles my mind stupidity because there's like no upside to that whatsoever we have the Briscoes beating uh, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett to win the ROH World Tag Team titles. I think this is their 12th championship reign in Ring of Honor. And uh, excellent match. Briscoes are awesome. And, uh, you know, Taven and Mike Bennett did a great job as well. All sorts of big near falls back and forth at the end. Doomsday device on the floor. Uh, another doomsday device by OGK. And finally, at the end, uh, Briscoes hit a doomsday device. Jay hit the Jay Driller and uh, Froggy Elbow for the pin. Briscoes win the titles. And as noted, Jay cut the promo afterwards saying it might be the end of the era. It's not the end of the Briscoes. And any tag team in the world is welcome to come out and challenge them. The lights go out. They come back on. There is FTR. They have this huge brawl. They're fighting. The people are breaking them up. They're flipping each other off. They're screaming at each other. So uh, that's coming. It should be awesome. Then the main event was Jonathan Gresham, Jay Lethal for the ROH World Title. And uh, it's Jonathan Gresham and Jay Lethal, so the match was great. And about uh, 10 minutes into the match, the locker room emptied. And everybody came down. They surrounded the ring. They're pounding on the uh, the ring apron. Gresham's hitting all of these near falls, but then he gets cut off. Jay Lethal hits him with the lethal injection. Gresham counters into a backslide and then uh, puts him in the octopus, and Jay Lethal taps out. So Jonathan Gresham is the new Ring of Honor champion. Jordan Grace, his wife, got in the ring, celebrated with him. Everybody jumps in there as the show goes off the air. It was a very good show. The crowd helped a ton. If you've been watching the Ring of Honor television in the empty arenas, I mean, this was a, a huge improvement with, with fans into the product. And it's the end for the time being. So hopefully they can restructure in a way to continue on. But I guess we'll see. Mm-hmm. Like the show. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio... We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 Audio shows at your fingertips.